We've also been told that there's a force of uh, friction. All right, let's just collect our information together. We've been told that the force of friction is 5 newtons. We've been told that the velocity at the bottom of the hill, so the V0, is equal to 1 meter per second. And at the top of the hill, your final V is equal to 2 meters per second. Okay, right, so I'd like you to write this down, work this out with me, and we'll see how we go. We've been asked to find out, right, what is the total work done on friction? Okay, so what we have to do is we have to take a look at the total amount of energy when we started down at the bottom of the hill, the total amount of energy that we have at the top of the hill, and see how much is missing according to our friction. Okay, so let's see if it correlates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that our friction force doesn't exist for now, and we're going to work backwards towards things. Okay. So we've got an initial velocity of one meter per second. That gives me EK. I have no potential energy at the beginning. At the end, I have both potential and I have a velocity, which means that I've got EK. So we've been asked to ascertain is the frictional force five newtons or not. Okay, so one of the things that we have to remember is that both EK and EP add up to give me your mechanical energy. So let's take a look at mechanical energy at the top and at the bottom. It's always a good idea to do a before and after the experiment sort of analysis. Okay, so what do we have in terms of before? I like to give this a heading so I can tell my examiner exactly what I mean so we can say to them, I'm working out what is happening at the bottom of the hill. So before, so this is at the bottom. Okay. So what is happening at the bottom? I've just got a velocity, so let's calculate my mechanical energy there. Right, so before I start down at the bottom, I know that my mechanical energy is equal to EK plus EP. I must write this down even if one of them is zero. I know that the EK consists of a half times M times V naught squared, right, plus my EP, which is zero. Right, that's at the bottom. So let's substitute. So I've got a half times, now there's something missing. And if I go back to my question and I read a little bit careful, right, I see that I've got a box which is two kilograms in mass. Absolutely vital that you've got the mass of this thing. Very often you'll find that there's something missing from one of your formulas and you've got to go back and find it. So this object is not going to change mass as we go up the hill. So we've got two kilograms traveling one meter per second. So let's work that out. Okay, so I've got a half times my two kilograms multiplied by one squared. Okay, so a half times two is one, one times one is one joule. Okay, so I've got one joule at the bottom. Okay, now I've got to ask myself a few things. I've got to ask myself what is happening as this thing goes up the hill. Right, is my frictional force going to come into this? How much energy was invested in this? They're going to ask me about the work done on this box if we know that we've got a frictional force. I don't want you to use a frictional force yet, and uh, we're going to include that fairly soon. Okay, so that was the mechanical energy at the bottom of the hill. Now the mechanical energy at the top, right, so this is final, or let's rather call it after. We have after. Okay, so before and after just to stay consistent. So this is now at the top. Okay, right, now my mechanical energy is not the only energy in the system, and we've got to be very, very careful. Okay, now afterwards we're going to talk about the mechanical energy, and that's my EK plus EP, but we must include work done on friction, and we'll take a look at that when we sum everything together. So, energy down before, energy afterwards, and then we're going to see how much extra energy we put in, and then we're going to see what sort of energy was invested in the system. Okay. So what is the EM at the end? Remember that it's EK plus EP, my kinetic plus potential. Right, and now we've got to go through several bits and pieces. Okay, so once again, a half times M V squared, so that's the final velocity, plus M times G times H. Okay, so we're going to calculate this together. So I've got a half multiplied by my mass, which hasn't changed, which is two multiplied by my final velocity, which is 2 squared, so it's gained a bit of velocity, and EK, right? And what's happened is that mass of 2 kilograms multiplied by your gravitational acceleration of 
9,8, has gone up a height of 5 meters. I cannot use this 20 meters. That's not important. Lateral distance will not make a difference there. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. It's gone up 5 meters. So let's put that all into there. So I've got a half times 2, which is 1, 1 times 4. So I've got 4 joules in EK, but I've also got to add in my potential energy. So I'm going to put this into my calculator, 2 times 9,8 times 5, and that gives me a value of 98 joules of potential energy. Okay, added together, I've got 102 joules of energy. Now they go on to ask me how much work is done. Now, what you can do is you can say, the work done is the work done on mechanical energy and on friction. Okay, so this is something that you've got to remember. It's not a formula that they'll give you. You are expected to work it out yourself. Okay, so your work, remember, is a change in energy. Okay, so your work done is a change in mechanical energy plus the work done on friction. Now, this is absolutely vital. We're going to come back to that frictional value of 5 newtons fairly shortly, and we're going to see how that affects my work done. Now, the change in EM is pretty easy. All you've got to do is take your mechanical energy at the end. So it's EM final minus EM initial. Now, if you're trying to work out what this delta means, this triangle in front of the EM, that means change. And it always means the final value minus the initial value. So EM final minus EM initial, right? And we're going to add to that the work done on friction. Okay, so let's get back to that a little bit later. Okay, so the EM final, remember that we had 102 joules of energy minus the initial energy right down at the bottom, which was very, very little, which was only one joule. Okay. So you can see that very, very small amount of energy at the beginning. A lot of energy was put into there as a result of increasing my mechanical energy. Okay, right, now for my work on friction. Now remember that work on friction is force multiplied by my displacement. Okay, now your displacement here is not perfectly horizontal, but I'm going to use delta x anyway. Now in terms of your parallel plane, it's displacement along the plane which we're moving. We're going to have to do a little bit of work there. Okay, so what's happened? We've got 101 joules plus the work done on friction. Now remember that my frictional force was 5 newtons, right, multiplied by this displacement. Now we've got to be very careful on how we do this. It's not 20, it's not 5. It's always the surface on which I was working. So how do I work that out? Okay, I take a look at my diagram and I see that the surface is running along a right angle triangle and a right angle triangle I can do Pythagoras on. 20 squared plus 5 squared if I square root that so let's just double check that 20 squared plus 5 squared equals 425 remember to square root your answer always and we come out to a value of 20 comma 62. So that is 20, 62 along there. And very often, you'll be asked to use trigonometry to work that out with an angle of the slope as well. So I've got 20, 62 meters displacement. Okay, let's see how that affects things. I've got 5 newtons of frictional force multiplied by 20, 62 newtons. And we're going to multiply that by 5. And uh, we're going to add our 101. And what comes out is factor which I'm going to round off quickly so that's 204 joules of work done now there's a lot of parts to this so what I'm going to do is just quickly brush over what's happened let's just neaten that up and uh, we're just going to quickly quickly go over how I did this okay remember that I've got my potential and my kinetic at the bottom that's my mechanical energy at the beginning we haven't done any work on friction yet so that's the energy initially on mechanical. We calculate the final mechanical at the top. Remember, that's EK and EP. I have to write down both, even if one of them is zero. Then what I did was I found the difference in mechanical energy, and I added it to the work done on friction. Now, this is something which is not often given to you in tests and exams. You have to remember that the work done in pushing something along, you have to come up with that term yourself very often. 
So it's a difference in mechanical energy. That's how much energy I put in, gaining height and pushing it forward and accelerating it, and my work done on friction, right, which was a negative form of work if you're studying that. So I found my change in mechanical energy by EM final, mechanical energy final, minus the initial value, and I added to, the, to that my work done on friction. Absolutely vital that you're able to do that.